Hey guys, it's Wanda from Deep South Homestead. Today, we're going to be in my greenhouse, which is the queen dome with the white shade cloth, and Danny's greenhouse, which is the black shade cloth called the king dome. We're going to show you what we're doing in both of them, and I just, look at this, this is awesome. I just replanted, I'm going to tell you what I planted. Danny's digging stuff in his, and we're cutting stuff. Wait till you see. As you see, these beautiful English peas back here. They're starting to get ready. I've picked a couple of times and we've had a few to eat and they are delicious. But I'm going to show you what I just planted. I put some fertilizer down, turned it under, and planted so that Wanda knows what she planted because I forget from five minutes later. So I'm going to walk you along what I just planted as a reminder to Wanda. We already left this um, cattle panel up. So in the front of the cattle panel, I planted cucumbers. I only planted four, and if it does anything like Danny's four, is going to be ten times too many. But just so I know, four cucumbers up toward the cattle panel so that I can run them up it. Behind it, I put lacinato kale. I just, to fill in the space, it may or may not do anything, but we're going to try it. There's a pole there that Danny had. I planted four um, Malabar spinach around the pole. I want to keep it going on the pole and maybe even reach over to the cucumber vine here if the Malabar does what it's supposed to. The next three runs, I planted Blue Lake green beans in there. And we're going to see how they did. The yellow wax beans, the Cherokee yellow wax beans did awesome. We ate for over a, maybe a month, month and a half. And then at the far end, I planted no, the next run, right before you get to the two runs before the tomato plant, the first run that coming from this way is zucchini. I wanted three or four zucchini plants. Then the next run is yellow crookneck squash. I only planted three or four of those to see how they'd do. They did not do this winter in here because there was no pollination. It got cold just when they were pollinating, and I couldn't leave the doors open. And... Then there's radishes down at the last little bit around the tomato and in between the okra at the end is radishes. I planted two different types of radishes. Did not have any luck with the radishes either and I, I've never had luck with radishes so we're going to see. We'll see how it does. Look at those beans. Look at the blooms. I'm leaving the doors open today until it starts storming. I'll come shut them down but so my pollinators can get in. I've been coming through just shaking them. The plants are beautiful and they're blooming like crazy and if nothing else I've got these beautiful plants that I can come out and look at but I love being able to pick a few beans we had a few last night we had a few about four days ago and there's lots of little beans and as you can see lots of blooms Well guys, the day has come to harvest the broccoli. Uh, we've been so busy on the she shed, uh, we've almost letting it go too far. It's done, the little flowerettes are done starting to turn to flower, to, starting to turn to try to open up on it. So we gotta get it off of here and get it in the freezer as fast as possible. And guys, I'm gonna tell you what, this is some fine broccoli. Now we're just gonna cut the heads and we're gonna leave the plants and we're gonna let them start shooting out the new shoots from the side so we can harvest them. But guys, some of these, some of these heads or a good eight to ten inches across so they're really huge I hadn't grown broccoli this big in many many years and then after that we're gonna come over here and we're gonna we got some potatoes in here that we planted we trying to clean these beds up a little bit getting ready for uh, this coming spring where we can start amending the soil adding some more soil into it and we're gonna take these potatoes out right here that we put in here just to see how they done uh, now they could still keep going, but we really want to just clean them out and get a kind of a better feel of what they've done in the greenhouse. Look at this. This baby's starting to turn yellow and orange. That tells me that we're fixing to have another pineapple here at 
Deep South Homestead. Okay, this one here is one to cut the other day, and we had that one, and I'm going to tell you what. Boy, that was some of the best broccoli. And, and look at this here. I mean, my hand, I can reach eight inches across my hand, and look at that. That head is the same size my hand is. Now, we're going to reach down here, and we're going to harvest this baby. We'll get it out here. We can get a better look. No hole in the center. So that tells me we do not have a boron deficiency. But look at this. Look at the size of that thing. Isn't that beautiful? Now we'll take these in the house and we'll soak them in salt water. The reason for doing that is in just in case up inside here, these little insects got up in there or something, that salt water will bring them out and uh, make them get out of there. But man, look at that. Show See all the little flowers popping off of it? If we'd have let it go, they, this this would have been gone too far. And we almost let this one go too far, guys. I, that's probably my fault for not coming out here paying better attention to what I should have been paying. Working on that garage as much as I've been working. But but this one here is still edible. There ain't nothing wrong with it. Now put your hand upside of one of the... Um... Let me, let me uh, show you something here. Now this is a... This is a two-gallon pail. Look at this. <laughs> Covers the whole bottom of a two-gallon pail. All right, now put your hand upside of these leaves. Like and these leaves, look at the size. I mean, it's, it's, it's like 18 inches from the tip of my elbow to the tip of my fingers. And look at some of these leaves. All the way to the tip of my finger down there. These leaves are over 18 inches long. They're huge. The stalk is something else, too. These stalks are... A good inch and a half across. I mean, that's how big they are. Look at that. Look at the size of that head. Amazing. Now, I'm going to leave these leaves with it because Miss Wanda a lot of times likes to add them in with, with the broccoli when she's doing it. Well, I don't know if we're going to get Two many. of them just filled my bucket and we still got more. Oh, look at that. Man... I think what has done this is the last couple of, about three, the last four days, our temperature in the greenhouse has been really, really warm uh, because it's been so warm outside. We've been almost 70 degrees. Today we're supposed to be 75. Uh, and the temperature in the greenhouse can run up as high as 80 and 90 degrees in here during the day. And this is a cool weather plant, and I think it's caused these heads to try to mature a lot faster than they normally would. Wanda, I don't know if you're going to get many of them in that bucket. I needed a five-gallon bucket. You needed to bring a five-gallon bucket is what you should have brought. Yep. Look at that. More of them, the flowers are trying. I'm just going to shake it and... Look on the floor. See them little flowerettes falling off of it? All right. Looks like your bucket ain't going to hold them all. That's one, two. That's four. Three. Four of them in there. I got room for one more. Oh, hit one of them leaves. That's got to go to the chickens. The chickens love that. Well. Well. Got <laughs> There's four broccoli heads. We almost let them go. They almost went too far. <laughs> These three right here, they don't get as much sunshine as the rest of them do. They're kind of back in a corner back here. So we're going to leave them. I think I might as well. Let's just go ahead and take this one. I think it would not going to hurt anything. Ooh, it's tender, boy. I just touched it and it cut it. Here we are. We got a few broccoli heads here in the bucket. I think this is going to be plenty to go in the freezer. This is going to last me and Ms. Wanda quite a while. Uh, this is some fine broccoli heads. And we're going to let these others stay right here and uh, let them put out the new shoots. And we'll come back probably in a week or so or maybe two weeks and we'll harvest the rest of the shoots off of them. Put them in the freezer. And then we'll pull them up, feed them to the chickens. And we'll get ready to start redoing the greenhouse. But this is not all. We've got big potatoes now. Okay, guys, these were some French fingerlings that we planted here, just as an experiment to see how they would do in the in the winter months. Uh, like I said, we could leave them, but 
I, I'm going to go ahead and pull them up just to see how they're doing because we really like to start amending this soil as much as we can. And, and two, I'm just curious, you know, to see how they are. We don't have any real fresh potatoes left. Everything's canned. Oh, wow. Already he's found a handful. I mean, that's a meal already, just about it. I mean, if I can get my hands to dig down into the soil. I mean, to be able to grow fritch fingerlings like that and know that we can do it. Yes, yeah, it was mainly an experiment just to see. I mean, you know, later we can just leave them. We do it again. This was just an, a test. Because we don't even plant potatoes for what another three weeks yeah not another three weeks or so yeah and we're harvesting potatoes so that's amazing we were curious on this side here to see if they were going to stay too wow. wet wow <laughs> they're looking good yeah if we'd have left them they'd have got way bigger yeah, they would have got a lot bigger. Um, that was one of the seed potatoes. Seasons. I'm trying to lay them here where they won't get in the way. I'm trying to. This side got a little cold. Um, this is the north side of the greenhouse. All right. <clears throat> we got about five plants here, and we got these few little old potatoes here off of them, these fingerlings. Um, we know now that it can be done. You know, we dug them a little prematurely, but. We just wanted to know, so it can be done. We got one plant left to go here. We're going, and I, we've learned you got to go down pretty deep, because these things, for some reason, want to go deep. Mm. Ah, look at that! There we go. These took all the fertilized. Looks like that's the average size right there of a fingerling. So that's really good. We got quite a few of good size ones wow yeah this one was stuck up over here by itself and it uh it got a little bit more of the fertilized it wasn't all bunched up six plants get this all out of here We'll get our garden bed all cleaned up here. And we like to get the leaves and the debris and all that stuff out of here because that's where a lot of your disease is over harbored in over winter and stuff. So we'll we get all that stuff out of there and out of the greenhouse. But that's it, guys. We got uh, you know we rake them out there. That's a pretty good couple of meals for me and Wanda. We'll add them together and put some. Uh, ain't we got some fresh snap beans we just picked that ain't been used? Yep. Okay, we're going to have some new potatoes. I got some English peas. Green beans and English peas. We've and got broccoli. And broccoli. Oh. And tomatoes, and I've got peppers, and we've got lettuce. Well, we got peppers. Look at here. Look at this. Yellow Marconis. January 1st. Still on the plant. These are turning. There's one up high on the other side. They're just, I mean, they're all around, guys. We got one right here. Got nothing right there. The yellow Marconis are turning on the plant here. We just left them. We was going to pull them up, but we decided to leave them. Look at that one up there at the green ones. Oh, yeah, look up here. They're hanging up there everywhere. So, and the plant looks horrible. And this is not all the potatoes we have, guys. We've got potatoes on the other side of the greenhouse over here. Now, this, the ones on the other side of the greenhouse are the Deep South Homestead potatoes. This will be our fourth generation of them that we've saved. Uh, we're trying to acclimate a potato for our climate. Whether it's going to work or not, I don't know, but this is four years of it, and they're still going strong. These are the potatoes that are in Danny's greenhouse. These are the Deep South potatoes. They're also leaning away from the outer wall, and you can see the cold bit back some, but it did not kill them. But look how pretty what stayed away from the outer wall is doing. These were planted before the fingerlings, so we're hoping to be able to dig some decent sized Deep South Homestead fourth generation potatoes. And we just can't kill this tree. This is a pepper tree, guys. I'm serious, a pepper tree. See, we have stalks. We've cleared it all the way up. Look. 
still got peppers. I'm talking hanging in there everywhere. Isn't it beautiful? It's still blooming, still putting on little peppers. I don't think we're even going to have to plant any peppers this year. It's going to just keep right on going. Isn't that a beautiful pepper tree? We've got Wanda's greenhouse. We've got a few potatoes over there. These are the potatoes that are mine. These are the French fingerlings. They're hanging in there. They're looking awesome. They're all drooping over the side because they got kind of tall and it was colder toward the back. So they came toward the front. But look how beautiful. This is January, guys. This looks awesome. My kale is coming back out. We've been snitching kale off and on. So it's kind of getting a little scrawny and it's coming back out. But we'll have more in the future guys the banana plant here in the greenhouse got bit back a little bit uh, now we this greenhouse high tunnel we wanted it to be cold we didn't want it to get warm because we have peach trees right here beside it that uh Are budding out. <laughs> that needs to have chill hours in order for them to bud out and bloom like they're supposed to so we didn't want this greenhouse to get too warm. We need so many hours of 40 degrees or colder. And that's why we leave this one where the cold can get into it. And we have the banana tree in here. And I didn't kill it, but it bit it back a little bit. And hopefully, before the winter's over, it'll make it through the winter. and It'll just keep on cadillac -ing. Now this is a dwarf banana. Hopefully next year, we'll have bananas on this tree. Well, guys, here we have two of our cabbage plants here. And these are in containers. We wanted to try cabbage in containers to see if it would work. We planted two plants per container. Uh, looks like it's going to work out okay. We've got little heads started in there. Um, this one here looks like one plant here is outpowering the other plant that's behind it. Now, this one's starting to try to head up pretty good. We've got two more in this one. Our thinking is we're trying to experiment and see, is it worth it to put two in a pot or should we just put one? Would the head mature a lot faster with just one? Or do we actually need both of them in here? So I think the cabbages are doing pretty good. My guess is going to be one, one per pot. Because this one that's really overpowering is doing a lot better than all the other ones are. So it tells me that we probably should just do in the future one cabbage plant per big pot. Look at it. You see where I took all the old off. Look how loaded this pepper is. I know we're not going to have to plant, plant anymore. These are banana peppers. And this thing came out from a huge stem that we had. And it was just a little bitty, little bitty sprigs when I left it. But look how loaded. So, guys, the greenhouses look like they're really paying off for us. Um, I call this a greenhouse. This is a high tunnel that has been converted into a greenhouse. So guys, if you're interested in something like this, contact Grower Solutions. Uh, now understand this, the only thing that comes from Grower Solutions is the steel frame. All the lumber work you see doing every, done everywhere, that is my design. The end walls is my design. The fans came from Grower Solutions. All that stuff did. All the metal framing and stuff like that. The kit came from Grower Solutions. Uh, we have a promo code, uh, Deep South. If you use that promo code, you get a 10% discount off of your purchase. So, guys, greenhouses are going to be a way of the future. High tunnel is what this is. We turn, we, Like I said, we turned it into a greenhouse. We can roll the sides up on it if it gets too hot, gets too cold. We can let them down. So guys, get yourself one while the getting is good with the condition our country is headed into. I don't know how long or we'll be able to purchase everything we need. I'm just telling you, this works. So thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.